fully understand it, but that he will bring about everything that he has uh, laid out in scripture, uh, you can take that to the bank. It will uh, come to pass. Amen. Uh, will I be a part of it? Uh, depends on me. Uh, God's grace, the Bible says, is uh, more than sufficient. Amen. And God has shed that grace in our hearts. He has shed his love uh, abroad. Uh, nothing uh, will change God's plan. What more the promises that he has made to you and I have not changed. You know, sometimes we may make a promise to our children. And sometimes our plans have to change because of things that arise that surprise us. That catch us off guard. Or simply different plans had to be made. And at times, we've maybe broken a promise to our child. Or we've had to change our plans and do something different. But not so with God. <laughs> His promises are yea and amen in Jesus Christ. Amen. They're not going to change. Amen. No matter what happens. Should the mountains be removed? Should the sun never shine again? Should all the stars of heaven fall? His promises are not going to change. They're going to be just the same. Should you be the last person on planet earth? His plan and his promises are unchanging. So, what have I to fear in 2020? If he's just the same. We can have peace in the storm. Now you remember Joseph in the Old Testament. How God gave him, the Bible calls him dreams, visions, revelations uh, to him. And as time went on, uh, things changed for him. Horrific situations, devastating and disappointing circumstances that arose. But, that, but did that change God's promises to him? Did the hatred of his own flesh and blood brethren change God's promises? No. Did uh, the great disappointment and the devastation of, of being sold into slavery change God's plan for him and his promises? No. Did uh, the days that turned into weeks, that turned into months, that turned into years change God's promises to him? No. And Joseph knew that. I wonder what you know tonight. I wonder if your circumstances, my circumstances have caused me to maybe begin to believe that God's promises are not so. The things that he has revealed, and you know there's things that God wants to reveal, and there's things that only God can reveal, that no person on earth can reveal to you. The promises of scripture, the hidden things, the things that are a mystery to us that will only be revealed by a God's revelation that we tend to call divine revelation. But even when the Lord reveals those things to us and the world around us changes, it doesn't change God. It doesn't change what he has revealed and time uh, may go on. The Lord may tarry, but it doesn't change His promises. Amen. So, here we are in 2020. What is my vision like today? Is it different than it was last year? Oh, it, wasn't. it seems like it was a long time ago, but last year wasn't really that long ago. Or five years ago. Or ten years ago. Has my vision changed? Now, someone mentioned about uh, 2020 vision this year. I think our CPMA uh, general coordinator, for the Horn, uh, that's his theme for this year. Uh, and while we can meditate on that thought there, who, 
could have imagined what 2020 would have brought us. You know, when, when we were in the assembly and as we left the assembly, we imagined many things. What we might do during this next year. We had a certain vision of, of what we might be able to do. But you know, these circumstances, the situation that the world is in today doesn't need to cast a shadow of fear on us or uh, discouragement or disappointment. The, the circumstances can become our disappointment if we allow them to, but we can decide to hold on to our 2020 vision or our 2020 vision. You know, uh, I think one of the things that Brother Warren had me mention was regarding 2020 vision and it not meaning, meaning to have perfect vision, but rather that when people look at an object, I can see what the average person can see. That it's clear enough, and though it's not perfect vision, I can see as well as you can see and as well as you can see, that object that we're looking at or contemplating. Now how does that maybe apply to us today or how can I use that today in, in trying to explain this message that I'm trying to get across is more than anything today, we need to have a clear vision. And while we can go in different directions with the theme uh, or the topic, what I would like to say here tonight is what I sometimes hear my pastor say that another old minister used to say is, I may not know everything, but at least I'm not confused. Because God is able to give us a clear vision of the things that he wants us to see. And the way I'd like to apply this tonight is we can have, and really, we must continue to have a vision of Christ and his church. There's no reason for our vision to become dampened, but only these things I believe that we are seeing all around us can serve for us to have a clearer vision of the end times and what God is trying to do. Uh, we may not know everything, but God can give us a clearer vision so that we don't wander in a valley of confusion. Now, we don't have all the answers to everything that's going on. I can't give an answer for everything. I can't explain every prophecy. I can't explain all of the mysteries, but... I'm glad I'm serving God today. And there's no better time to serve God than the present. Amen. Because all the things that we see are the signs of the times that, that this thing is winding up. Amen. Or winding down. Amen. And Christ is coming back soon. And while I may not be sure of all things, I can be sure of where I stand with God tonight. Amen. I can be sure that I love God and that God loves me. Those things I can be sure of. The things that I have control of. Amen. We can have a vision today that we can see so clearly, uh, clearly what others have seen who have come before us. 2020 vision. To see what others saw. I'm looking at the object I'm looking at the church, and I want to see what others saw, those that came before me. Amen. That's 2020 vision. In the year 2020. Amen. Because God's promises have not changed. His word has not changed. And he is the same. He's not going to readjust things just because of the way things are. Amen. To see things clearly as others that came before us have seen them, to see Christ as the Son of the living God, uh, to experience uh, what is that perfect will of God, to know the power of His resurrection, to know, 
today that he is alive and well. Well, how do you know, Brother Oscar? Because I feel him in my soul. Amen. Because when I kneel down, I feel something. I know he has inclined his ear to my prayer. And I feel him stirring in my soul. To know that the church is divine in origin, holy in nature, and that she is the body of Christ. A clear biblical vision of Christ and the church will tell us that this divine institution is to be all that Christ is. The church. Amen. <laughs> that 2020 vision, it will tell you that the true church has unity of doctrine, unity of government, and unity of purpose. That's been the message that's been preached for years. And it has not changed. So I should be just as excited in 2020, regardless of the coronavirus and any pandemic and any sickness and infirmity. Because it doesn't change God. This 2020 vision that we speak of means that we can see in the Bible something that may be so elementary, but to see that there is only one Jesus and there is only one church. Very basic. But you know it takes God revealing that to know that. It doesn't come by human intuition. It doesn't come by human explanation. It comes through divine revelation. Amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, this 2020 vision that we speak of in which we can see what others who came before us saw means that we see in the Bible by revelation of God's spirit that the church of God is the exclusive one and only Church of the Bible. Amen. There is no other. Right. Now, in order to understand that, it takes God opening up our understanding. Right. Right. And it'll take that for each and every one of us. But you know, I feel sometimes we preach divine revelation as though it's way out there. And only a certain few can receive it. But it's not that way. I believe God desires to reveal to every honest-hearted Christian the deep things of God. They're not just for me. They're not just for you. And I'm thankful to God because I have some children that need to get it for themselves. Amen. I mean, if it was out of reach, if it was out of reach for my children, if it was out of reach for other people, and God only has selected a few, but you know, God, I believe, is willing to reveal to the honest-hearted Christian, the searcher, the seeker of truth, the deep things of God that, that can't be understood with human intellect. And so we have the Bible, and we have the Holy Ghost to lead us and to guide us into all truth. Now, I realize that in some Christian circles, there are some that walk around with spiritual glaucoma, spiritual cataracts. But you know, you and I would be living far beneath our privileges if we suffer from those conditions in the church. We have no reason to suffer from those conditions in the church. You know, in the world, it's not such a difficult, uh, what do you call it, procedure. And some people go completely blind, either not understanding, not knowing, or not availing themselves of, of such an easy procedure to get cataracts removed. And they lose their sight completely because they didn't do nothing about it. And there's some people, 
even in church, who are living below their privileges. There's no need to walk around with spiritual cataracts in the church. Amen. And the reason I read Acts chapter 20, verses 7 through 10, is because the one thing that sticks out to me in those few scriptures, and the Bible speaks of Paul being there uh, preaching, and they were in the upper chamber. If you've read the story, and I know I've mentioned it before, they were on the third floor. He was there preaching. The Bible says he preached long into the night. But I think it's verse 8 that states that there was many lights. <laughs> many lights. And you know, sometimes we need that third floor experience. Where we just come up into the presence of God, into the upper chamber of revelation and understanding where, uh, spiritually speaking, there are many lights. Where God reveals and God is able to uh, help us to see the things that he wants us to see. Yes. Amen. While, while out in the world there is darkness, a gross darkness, in the church there is many lights. And we're talking of spiritual light. We're talking the word and revelation and power. If we would just avail ourselves of it. If we would just draw closer to God. Uh, let the conditions of the world be as they may be. But you and I are in a blessed place. Yes. Amen. Amen. Here in this place having services. But more than that we're in the church of God. Yes. The pillar and ground of the truth. Amen. Amen. Yes. Many lights in the church. The Bible uh, speaks uh, in Psalms, I believe, 36, 36 and, and 9. It says, For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. I remember the first time I read that, I said, Well, how do you see light in light? But that's what the Bible says. In thy light shall we see light. I don't understand that, Brother Paul. But if there is a place, the Bible says that uh, in speaking about Christ, uh, being in the light as he is in the light. Amen. And when you're in that light, the Bible says that we shall see light. light. Amen. So there's a place where we come, I believe, in the Lord where we, we begin to understand we're walking in the light as he is in the light and as we Walk in the light and we can see more light. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Have deeper and greater understanding. Not something different, but something deeper. Maybe that I hadn't understood or seen before. I don't believe I know everything. I don't believe I've seen everything. But if I continue in the light, I shall see light. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That heavenly vision that Paul spoke of that uh, he said showed him the gospel way he said was not given to him and it was not taught to him by man. When he had his encounter on the way to Damascus, a Christ appeared unto him. There was a bright light that uh, shone from heaven and it caused him to fall to the ground. That was God. That was Christ appearing unto him. And the things that he was then able to understand, he, he testifies and says, it wasn't man that taught it to me. I didn't go to man and it wasn't man that put it in me, but it was Christ himself. It was God. Amen. And thank the Lord that it was because things got a little tough for Paul. He suffered beatings. And he was whipped with a rod and he was uh, tortured, he was betrayed, he was disappointed. Uh, he says by uh, false brethren even. Shipwrecked, left for dead. He was hungry, he was cold, and all these things all in the service of the Lord. But because he had grabbed a hold of something, and something had grabbed a hold of him, praise God. When it came to 
the nitty gritty. But he knew he had something that was true and it was real and it went deep down into his soul and in his heart that didn't let him go and he did not let it go either. Amen. Revelation and a vision, praise God, that penetrated his very soul and he knew it was real. Not because some man had convinced him, but because he had had a, a real life experience. He had seen and felt the power of the living God. Amen. And when he was in prison, and when he was writing his last letter to Timothy, it was still the same and even sweeter. Because now he was just that much closer to seeing his Savior face to face. See, none of those things changed his vision. Amen. The circumstances could have been whatever they could have been, but he knew the outcome would be the same. That's why he said, whether I live or die, I'm his. Yes. And another time he said, well, you know, I'm between two things. To be here with you guys, good for your sake, and I think I'll hang around, but if it was up to me, I'd be gone. Yeah. Huh? There, was, there was that vision that he had, some revelation that Christ had given him uh, on the road to Damascus, and, and, and from there on, after, experiences that he had, even when he was beat with the rod, I think it made his vision become clearer. He knew that Christ was there with him. You know, Elijah and his young servant. Now, Elijah had something, but the young servant didn't have it. We as parents and those that have been around the church long enough, you know, we need our younger people to have it. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. I need my children, Brother William, to have it. When I was a child, I didn't understand the things that my dad believed and he preached so firmly and so uh, convincingly. I believed what my dad was saying because I can't believe my dad would lie. I'm his child, I'm his son. Why would he say something to lie to me? So I believed him as my father, but I didn't have a, a revelation and a vision for myself. But I got it. Years later, I got it. When I gave my life to Christ, it seemed like, like the Lord just opened up my understanding and, and all of a sudden I understood and I saw in Scripture this thing. We want our children to have it. We want our young people to have it. A revelation. One Christ. One church. Amen. One baptism. One faith. One Holy Ghost. Amen. One doctrine, one purpose, unity in the church. Yes. <laughs> that vision now, Elijah, when he come out, after his servant went in there and said, uh, we're in trouble because we're surrounded by the Syrian army. Right. <laughs> what will we do? Right. Elijah came out, wasn't worried. Right. He just prayed to the Lord, Lord now. You're going to need to help me yes. open up the servant's eyes so he can see what I see. Right. You know, that's the prayer yes. that we ought to have. Yes. Open the eyes of our children. Yes. Open the eyes of our young people. Yes. Amen. Help them to see yes. the things that you've allowed us to see. To get a real hold of this thing about Christ yes. and His church. Yes. <clears throat> the Lord, of course, He opened His eyes. And I believe that it is necessary, even urgent, that our young people and our children, that they see and hear in our lives, our voices, a genuine 
confidence and undisturbed trust in the word of God. Amen. Amen. That's what Elijah did. Wasn't bothered. Wasn't shook. Wasn't disturbed. He just said, Lord, open his eyes. And when the Lord opened his eyes, everything changed for that young man. Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. We don't want anyone to perish. But this is what the Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And this word vision simply means the, the ability or the faculty to be able to see. And that's what we need. I need that today more than ever. Yes, Clear vision. Again, I said I don't understand everything and I don't know all the answers to, to everything. I don't know what every prophecy in the Bible means. But I know who does. Yes. And if I can just connect with him, yes. draw closer to him, if he so desires to help me to understand something, that I'm going to understand it. I want to have a clearer vision. Amen. Yes. Strong's definition is sight, dream, revelation, or a vision, a divine vision. A vision uh, may be spoken of in divine vision in those terms or a dream, especially a vision from God. And that's what Psalms of uh, Proverbs 29 and 18 is talking about, where there is no vision. The people perish. We need a revelation of God. Yes. Amen. We need a vision from heaven. Yes. Praise the Lord. So we could say that without divine revelation, the people perish. Yes. Amen. What is divine revelation? Again, sometimes we speak of it as though, as though it's unattainable. But put in simple terms, it is gaining of knowledge and understanding that only God can give us. Only God can give us. And you know the wonderful thing about divine revelation is when it's given, there's such a deep conviction and an understanding that nothing can take it away. Do you remember singing that song, the, uh, the devil didn't give it to me? Now, he can't take it away. The joy, uh, the excitement, that, the gladness that I feel, the salvation that I have, he didn't give it to me. Amen. Therefore, he cannot take it away. Amen. Divine revelation from God. Uh, he cannot take it away. The world cannot take it away. Amen. I can decide to lay it aside and forget about it and turn my back on it, but to take it away? Uh-uh. Right. God gives it to you and you grab a hold of it. Nothing. Nothing can take it away. Amen. You'll never convince me otherwise. You couldn't convince the disciples. Let me read something to you here. I read this a year ago or something by a gentleman called Charles Colson. I saw it on some social media platform. It's his quote. He says, I know the resurrection is a fact. And Watergate proved it too. I believe Charles, well, I'll just read it. I know the resurrection is a fact and Watergate proved it to me. Now there's several of us in here probably way too young to remember what Watergate was. Unless you watch the History Channel or read it in an article somewhere. All right? But believe me, it was a lot of trouble. A lot of high officials, even uh, the then president, got himself in trouble. This is what this man says. I know the resurrection is a fact and Watergate proved it to me. How? Because 12 men testified that they had seen Jesus raised from the dead. Then they proclaimed that truth for 40 years. Never once denied it. Not once did they deny it. Everyone was beaten, tortured, 
stoned and put in prison. They would not have endured that if it weren't true. They had something. They had a vision. They had a revelation. Amen. That, that stones and beatings and prisons could not get it out of them. Threatening could not get it out of them. You see, when God puts it and God reveals it to you, there's nothing in this world that can take it from you. No sickness, no infirmity, no persecution, no tribulation, no hunger, no beatings, no shipwreck that can get it out of you. It says Watergate embroiled 12 of the most powerful men in the world and they couldn't keep alive for three weeks. You're telling me that 12 apostles could keep alive for 40 years? Absolutely not. Amen. When it's the truth and God puts it there, it's the truth and nothing can take it. Amen. 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 That 2020 vision in the year 2020 is what we need to hold to. Because this too shall pass. Amen. The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall remain forever. Amen. 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 Praise God. I'll ask you to stand tonight. Jesus explained it this way. Flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto you. But my Father, which is in heaven. Can you imagine such a great and wonderful blessing? He says, it wasn't mom and dad. And it will not be mom and dad. It won't be your Sunday school teacher. It won't be, uh, it won't be your pastor that's going to reveal these things to you, the deep things of God, the things that have to do with Christ and his church, the Bible church. But it will be the Father. Amen. And that's why it's divine revelation, because it comes from heaven above. I'd like to invite you to come and pray with me for a minute. I wonder if Sister Marlo can help us with uh, the piano for just a, a second. And I know situations are the way they are. I want to be sensitive to that. If you'd like to kneel down where you're at and pray to the Lord, please feel free to do so if you want to.